Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is Greg. This is Greg's Mowers and More, and today we're going to be working on a power craft tiller. So let's get into it. Well, here's the unit right here, and a fine one she is. This one was given to me by my uncle and my cousin. And uh, judging by the way it sits, I don't think it's ran in quite a while. Um, first off, it's missing a spark plug. So I got a brand new one to put in there. And it's definitely old. That's a torch cut bar right there. And then that wheel's seen better days for sure. So it does roll over. That recoil starter, as soon as we get some compression behind it, I bet you that thing's gonna hang the rope or if it does fire up, it's gonna stay engaged. We'll see. I've had to clean up about a million of them Briggs recoil start bearings, so we'll see what happens. First thing we're gonna do, pop a little bit of oil in that cylinder, roll it over a little bit. Let's see if we got a little fire. I got a new plug for it right here. But I'll bet we don't. I will about bet you we are gonna have to clean the plugs on the points on this thing. Alright, so let me get you in here. nothing totally dead okay so the next thing we're gonna have to do is take this shroud off and uh get in, in there and remove the flywheel so let me get into there and i'll bring you guys back all right i got that shroud off and got in here somebody somebody's been in here before the three shroud bolts that hold this cover on they were all finger tight and now that i've gotten in here Somebody's taking this linkage off the carburetor for the governor and just let it sit there. So that wouldn't have been good. Um, but anyway, we got to take this starter clutch off. And that's these bolts here. We'll remove this fin cover. And then we'll grab this with a pair of channel locks or something and hold it. And uh, put a little flywheel in or a pry bar in here to hold the flywheel from moving and crack that loose and pull that off. Then there'll be a nut underneath here that we'll have to use an impact on and then we'll take the flywheel off to access the points so let me get cracking at that On these here starter clutches, you can hear how dry and rattly that sounds. You're supposed to take these apart every few hours and lube them with a little bit of oil in there to keep them from sticking. But most people never do that. It's amazing to me how some of these machines, they run for 10, 15, 20 years without having the starter clutch lubed and they don't really give you much trouble. But the day one of them ball bearings decides to stick in the groove, boy, then it's then they give you all kinds of all kinds of fits. Now you can see that starter clutch a little bit better. So we're gonna have to try to get that off of there with a pair of channel locks. Let me see if anyway, I'm gonna have to take that off without you guys because I need two hands. So I'll have you back here in a minute. Alright, so I got the starter clutch broke free. And it just twists off of there.
So it is righty tighty lefty loosey on the starter clutch. Just if you guys ever need to do one. Anyway, you can hear the ball bearings in there. Before we put it back together, I'll show you guys how to lube that. And uh, then we're down to our flywheel. And there's our flywheel key. So let me see if I can't get that flywheel off of there. And then we'll get you guys in there again. All right, I got the flywheel broke loose, but I wanted to show you guys how I did that because a lot of people think you need a big expensive puller. My uncle, who knows more than most people have forgot, showed me how to do this a long time ago. You put your fly, pry bar underneath the flywheel like that and you pry up on it and you find something to set on top of the end of that shaft. You can even put the nut back on there if it's got a nut, but this one doesn't. So I use this little half inch socket so that way you don't mar it. And then you'll give it one swift blow right on top of the crankshaft while you're prying down on it and she'll pop right up. Then you can just pluck her off of there. And there's our points cover right there. So we'll tear the cover off of that. Should so it should be the same size. There it is. And then we'll get in here and take a look at our points and our condenser. But I'm pretty sure they're either shot or corroded up, and that's why we don't have no spark. We might get lucky and get in here with our points file, clean them up and uh, get them going. Let me get this cover off and we'll come back. All right, we're in here now. This is the points. And if you're not familiar with points, let me see if I can show you how this works. The engine rotates and those points will open and close on a breaker cam. Well, you guys can see that moving. They're moving. So anyway, so what'll happen is over time, these things will sit and they'll get all corroded in here on the actual breaker point. So I'm gonna have to go find my points file because these don't look like they're in too bad a shape. And what I'll do is I'll file those and smooth them back down and get a good contact again. And then I'll bet you we have spark. All right, so this is an ignition points file. See, it's got a real fine little surface on it there. And I've ro rotated this engine so that the points are closed. I'm gonna pop that open. Oh, this is hard to do with one hand though. Get that in between there. And then I'm just gonna back and forth. And we're gonna file them points. So they get nice and smooth and nice and clean. Uh oh, okay, I'm gonna have to put them back together now. I popped the springs. But anyway, you get the idea. I'll clean these up real fine and then we'll come back. All right, so I got those all cleaned up and put back in there. And uh, you always wanna make sure that they open and close and they are. So we'll put the cover back on and start working on getting this thing back together so we can continue to see if it's going to run or not all right now i'm going to show you guys how to fix these starter clutches so i took a screwdriver and i pried between the top plate and the bottom plate you can see i already have that open so now this top plate has a seal on it and it'll just come off like that and you can see it's real dry in there so you look down in here and you see this piece which is your center spinner hub see that this thing's got a lot of wear on it. it's been dry for a long time and then you got six ball bearings and six notches for them to go in so when you pull the rope on that this thing throws these ball bearings out in these notches and that's when it catches to pull the engine over when you release that it spins the other way because the spring tension on the recoil pulls it back and these go down here and lets it freewheel so it's real dry in there you can see that but it does look pretty clean normally I would spray these out with some carb cleaner but I'm not gonna do that on this one just because it does look real good but what I use is I just take some 1030 motor oil and don't take much and you just put a little bit in there 
and make sure you coat those little ball bearings with it. And uh, that should fix our little problem there. So we're gonna take this without dumping any of the bearings out, hopefully. Set it down there. And uh, just go ahead and dump a little bit of oil in there. Hopefully just a little bit. There we go. Doesn't have to be very much. Just a little bit will do ya. So now I got a little bit in there. Then you're gonna take this guy and you're gonna use him to kind of rotate those around. Let me get my right hand in here. Rotate them around if you can. Having a tough time with it though with one hand, I'll be honest. All right, let me get this done and then I'll have to bring you guys back again. All right, I got all them little ball bearings back in there. Now, now you can see how that works. Pull it that way, it locks. Spin it that way, three wheels. All right, so now we're gonna put the cover back on. It just slips over. Okay, and there you have it. Starter clutch is ready to go. So we're gonna go ahead and get him back on there. All right, so now I'm gonna get my, my uh, pry bar and my pliers back out. When you put your, your uh, pry bar in here, don't use the aluminum fins. Make sure you use the cast ones. You'll bust these off. These you will too if you're too hard on it. So just kind of treat it with kid gloves and get this thing snug. It doesn't have to be, you know, Gorilla Torque or anything like that. So I'll go ahead and do that. Throw the recoil back together and we'll see if this thing will puff off. All right, so I got the recoil put back on there. And uh, we're going to see if she'll pop off here for us. So let's go ahead and give her a little, little snuff of that. And we'll give her a yank. I'd say she's going to be a runner. Let's throw a little juice down in that tank and see if the old carburetor won't work. My guess is we're probably going to have to go through the carburetor. Seems like pretty much every one of these that I have I go through the carburetor on. But we can give her the benefit of the doubt. Alright, how much did I get in there? That ought to be enough for her to run on. Alright, let's set the choke on it so it'll draw the fuel better here. Flooding it? Alright, maybe we're gonna prime it the old fashioned way. I don't like using that starting fluid though. I think it's going to draw fuel. I don't think it's going to. Okay. 
kind of seems like well we'll try one more thing try putting a little bit right down the throat there if I can get it to do it I want to drown it That was way too much. Way too much. Okay. Let's see what it does now. Alright. Yep, I'm going to have to take that carburetor apart, guys. I think I'm going to leave that for another video and do a Briggs carb video, though. Because as for today, you saw we got this old engine running, and that was a task in and of itself. Thanks for watching. God bless you.